question among new shooters is what's the best carry position? Well, nobody can actually tell you what the best carry position is because uh, much of it comes down to personal preference and personal body mechanics, but I'm going to get to that here in a minute. What I'm going to do with the first part of this video is try to make sense to you what my opinion is on the different carry positions and the pros and cons of them. Now to start with, uh, every carry position has one common con against it, and that is if you're in a fight, so you're defending yourself, somebody's swinging at you, you've got a hold of somebody, uh, you're tussling around, whatever. You're trying to fight yourself off from a large group of people, whatever the situation may be. Every carry position involves this, and that is reaching for a gun, reaching for your pistol, which means you've taken half of your defense away. You've taken half of your fighting ability away. You may be blocking with this hand and punching with this one, blocking with this one, punching this with this one, controlling somebody's body with both, both hands, but any way you put it, you end up having to release the person attacking you in order to reach for your gun, which ultimately puts you at a little bit more danger. So let's start with appendix carry and we'll work our way around the body. With appendix carry, a lot of people like that appendix carry. I personally do not like the appendix carry and uh, it is for the reason that it hurts me. Uh, and a lot of people will say the same thing. It, hurt, it hurts them. Uh, appendix carry anywhere from like dead in front of you off to like right here uh, j just in the one o'clock area or so. It's great if you're standing all the time. Um, if you're not in absolute tip top physical condition uh, it has a tendency to dig when you're sitting, although in the appendix carry position it's probably the best for uh, automotive defense. If, if you're sitting in a car and somebody approaches you or a group approaches you, just reaching down and grabbing your pistol turning turning to the window is probably the most accessible. Like I said, outside of that a lot of people complain about pinching, digging, and, and things of that nature. Obviously, this can be uh, avoided by getting into better physical condition and, and so on, but those are the pros and cons of being in the appendix carry. Now, carrying in the 3 o'clock position, which would be directly off the side of your hip, directly off the, the this point of your hip, uh, some of the cons are that, uh, number one, if you don't like printing and you are a concealed carrier, which, you know, you have your t-shirt or shirt over top of your gun, um, it has a tendency to print more directly on the hip versus just off the hip, front or back. It has a tendency to print more. Uh, number two, in your vehicle, again we're talking about vehicles, if you wear a seat belt, usually your gun is pinned between you and the clasp of your seat belt, that giant hunk of plastic or steel where your seat belt clips in together. And that makes it harder to draw from your side to turn to shoot out the window or, or even in front of you if you have to defend yourself from your car. Now the pros are a lot of standardized uh, hip holsters, not holsters that are made specifically for concealed care or, or you know for inside the waistband and things like that, but outside the waistband holsters, a lot of them are based off of a standard three o'clock carry. So you're almost always going to find a holster that meets your needs with that three o'clock carry position. Now another con with the three o'clock carry position is that you have to reach farther. Uh, unlike, with the appendix carry, you're more likely to have to, if, you, if you're in a confrontation, you have a hold of somebody, this movement here is a lot shorter distance than having to reach all the way back here, putting your elbow back there, blading your body a little bit, maybe even taking yourself off balance to a point. But that's another one of the cons with the with the three o'clock carry is it's a further reach than say appendix carry. Now six o'clock or small the back carry uh, as the third and, and final of the popular you know three top carry positions. Uh, the small the back or six o'clock carry. Um, I have no way nice no nice way of putting it. I just think it's dumb. Uh, it's, it takes you completely out of your range of body mechanics. You have to reach all the way behind your back, uh, putting yourself at risk by having any sort of guard, any sort of defense up and over, uh, up and in front of you, where at least with a three o'clock carry, all you have to do is bring your hand back up here and same thing with, with appendix carry. If you're not able to reach your gun in time, you can still get up here, all the way back here, not going to happen. 
Also, if you're in a fight, chances are you're going to land on your back at some point in time. You land on your back, you run the risk of injury because you got a giant hunk of steel that you just fell onto your spine with. Also, when you're laying there, you can't reach your gun. Also, of course, with automotive, uh, when you're in your car and having to defend yourself, you're sitting on your gun. Um, there just are no positives with small and back carry. It's not the movies, it's not cool, just don't do it. Now some may say, uh, well what about like a cross draw or a shoulder holster? Shoulder holsters I think are equally as bad as the 180 degrees, the 6 o'clock or small of the back carry. Um, first of all, you're breaking a handful of the safety rules the second you grab your gun. You've got your hand on your gun, it's now pointing in a direction that you have no idea what your target is, you have no idea what you're pointing at, and if you have an ND, that thing goes flying backwards into the crowd you may be trying to pr protect, into your loved ones that you stood in front of to get between the attacker and them, and so on. Also, the second you start pulling it, you're flagging everybody, you flag your own arm, and you also put yourself in a position by reaching across if somebody happens to be near you, or if you're in a fight, or if you're in a crowd, the second you reach across, they capture your arm. And not only is your primary arm, your primary hitting hand, not only is it now useless because it's pinned up against you, but so is your gun. Now I'm sure some people will disagree, uh, disagree with me on, on a handful of those things, and that's fine. This is just my opinions. It's how I teach people. And um, speaking of teaching people, that gets me into what I teach people to figure out their best place for carrying. Now like I said in the beginning, it's going to be a lot of personal personal preference and body mechanics. Uh, so what I want you to do is just stand you know, wherever you're at. You can do this at home, you can do this on the range. That's why I'm doing it here, just to show people that they don't have to do this at the range. Uh, making sure it's clear. Uh, just stand in your living room, in your hallway, wherever you're at, and just relax. Go limp, shake it out, shake out your hands. Think about, try to think about nothing. And take your primary hand, your, your strong side hand, and just run it straight up your body. Right? Just from wherever it's sitting, run it straight up your body. That line, right there, for me, is going to be my most natural place for a holster because it follows my natural body mechanics. I don't have to reach and then run my hand up, putting my shoulder in a bind and so on, like I would in a straight three o'clock position. My hands also don't just sit here and cover my junk either, so you know pulling straight up isn't an option. My hands just rest right, kind of uh, almost on the front of my thighs. I, I know I know you can't see them very well, but almost on the front of my thighs, just off the center, pull straight up, and if you see, that's where my holster's at. That's where I carry. And so that, just reaching straight up, my, my hand goes right across the pistol, I come out, and I have, I have no reaching, I have no obstacles, I don't have to get out of, out of natural body mechanics, um, I'm not reaching across my body or any of that stuff. It's right where I want it to be. Like I said, go from what would be a surprise position. Maybe you're watching a concert, maybe you're sightseeing and somebody decides to attack you, but you're just relaxed. Run that, run that hand straight up your body and that's where your natural drawing position will be. And like I said, mine is right there. So once you find that natural position, once you find that natural drawing point, whether you're left or right handed, um, Practice it. Practice it at home. Practice it in your living room. Um, I have a, uh, a, a trouble with front sight focus video that I made not too long ago. Combine the two. Find your natural drawing point and get that quick presentation in. Now outside of printing, outside of whatever varying clothes you have on and so on, um, I think you're going to be happiest with carrying in that position that I just explained to you. Uh, and I, I think it's going to make, I personally think, and from the people that I've talked to, and the people that I train, the people that I teach, uh, have all given me feedback on this and said that it works really well for them. So, 
try it out. Let me know what how, if it works for you. Let me know if it doesn't work for you, and uh, maybe we'll talk and figure out something else for you. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Talk to you later.